Sorry. I wasn't supposed to be streaming that time. Still got my cup of tea there to grab. <laughs> Oops. How does that happen? I wonder. We're on a new site. Hi, everybody. Let's try this again. We'll get into the stream. Total panic here, trying to get this up and running, and it's running while I'm not even sat there. So we got a great show for everybody today. We're a little early, my apologies. And there's many facets to nuclear, but we killed the Pacific Ocean. And turn that music down. I got no idea how the stream just started on its own. That's good. I'll turn that music down. Now, we're streaming from a new site because our main site with 22,000 subscribers 11 days before the Fukushima 7th anniversary was suspended. If you don't know who I am, I'm Dana Durham for the nuclear proctologist.org. And what I do and have done our expeditions on the coastline of British Columbia, that's the little fleet there. And what I do is I go out and we investigate the tidal zone, but we're, I'm also a nuclear expert. And the reason we're investigating the tidal zones is because we're feared that there was an extinction event from thousands of headlines that we covered before we went on the ocean. To your left, you can see what the species normally would look like, and the pictures that I'm providing behind me shows the species are missing. These are the before and after from the same spot. We have an incredible amount of nuclear news and story, Fukushima documentation to get through today. I'm just going to start off with this, seeing as we started off with a little twist for a change. It's so hard to do what I'm doing, and everybody's heard this a thousand times. And so I very rarely make any mistakes. And so today we had two minutes to just know Dana. That was interesting. <laughs> it's cold and wet, and I was shutting down everything here before the stream goes live. I got my cup of tea, and I got to run over and grab that before uh, the tea bag is... You leave the tea bag in your cup for too long, you know what that means, right? So the species are gone. throughout British Columbia, so that would mean, and now, because we went out and documented, these are authentic before and after in the same place. I noticed I had 11 thumbs down before the stream even started, my second video on my new site, Desperate. e, &E News has gone down. Uh, this is really interesting. We're going to cover that right away. They're planning on shipping more food out of the they're growing food in Fukushima Prefecture. Of all the places on the planet that you can grow food, why would you grow food in the most, the worst place where everybody that was smart ran away from? That was, wasn't brainwashed by the media, ran away from. The before and after pictures you're looking at are authentic pictures, an extinction event. I did have some incredible pictures but I got copyright strikes for using them right away. Not real ones, but that took down my site. We had to go get another site to stream from. And everybody that's been around remembers those days. And so the best pictures of the coastline have been denied because of copyright threats and actual strikes on my account when I'm using it under fair use. But they wouldn't allow no appeal. And remember, before they arrested me, they took down 30 of my really important videos but they weren't able to take down my site. One of the first people to become a partner on YouTube eight years ago before Google bought it. Now these pictures should frighten the daylight. So they, uh, a lot of people become complacent because you're here all the time. But these pictures, these documentations, we covered thousands of headlines from e, &E News that aggregated them an energy news site. Once again, I got the double volume. Sorry, apologies. We had an echo. Let me turn the volume up. It's heartbreaking. 
I fixed all that too this morning. So there he was, started off with a big echo. What am I going to do? Hang on, wait for it. Um, I just let the pictures play automatically. I go put some honey in my cup of tea and I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Mr. Rock and Roll. Hello, everybody. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for finding the time and finding me. For the live stream, if you're here, joining the live stream. How is you going, eh? I'll get to you in a little tiny bit. We're off on a little bit of a go today. And that wasn't supposed to show up. So the show was supposed to start off with black. I fade out of the black into this. And then let that play out as I was going. Hi, everybody. I'm Dana Durnford, the nuclear proctologist. It's March the 5th, 2011. And I was supposed to jump over. It's 6 p.m. is our normal stream. We Monday, we try to do it at 10.30 a.m. Please remember to give us a like, blah, 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 blah. Give us some Twitter. If you don't like Twitter, consider shooting it. Just a joke. Okay, well, he took it literally. Or consider starting up uh, alternate sites and posting my material and link back to me. Uh, I've been pretty cool. And the big elephant in the room, Hollywood is pushing the narrative to confuse everybody and media, is that these superheroes like Spider-Man and, and the Hulk are allegedly created by nuclear waste, which kills everything. And you got superhero after superhero to confuse you and your friends and your children and your young adults, so you can't even tell the difference. And in these fantasy worlds, um, these are to be feared. It's a ticking time bomb. We just lost the Pacific Ocean. We lost the Pacific Ocean. And it's it's time to end nuclear. It's time to get lost on nuclear. And for everybody worldwide, you at some point in the very near future will appreciate these words, I'm sure. And it's heartbreaking we never got the stream up and running properly. Sounds okay, Elaine? Good. And what, I, what it is with my sounds, please get on the phone. Hi, everybody. It looks like some confusion here this morning. Stream looks good. It says the health is good. Let's get it rolling. I'll try to remember to put an annotation at the beginning of the video for everybody. Dana, where are you to? Why are you way back there? I can't see you way back there, Dana. I haven't even had a sip of my tea. Tea. Hang on. I'll try not to slurp. Right, we got away with that one. Let's try one more. Hi, everybody. Thank you, everybody. And folks, you got to realize that this is this site. Uh, the comment section is not a free-for-all. Yeah. 
It's meant, it's meant for real people to have a real conversation or a place to have a chat and everything else. Hi, Joe. Hi, George. Elaine is your moderator in blue. And don't take her for granted. It's a lot of work and a lot of stress to do what she does. She originally wanted to quit, but I kind of begged her to stay and do this job. And she eventually understood that it wasn't as scary as it originally looks if you approach it realistically. And it's just like it breaks your heart if you have to, to ban somebody. You know what I mean? And nobody wants to ban anybody on my site, trust me. Elaine does not want to ban anybody. That stresses her out and everybody else out. Nobody wants to do that. And you can see the hate where you have 11 thumbs down before the video even starts. And all we're going to do is show you the documentation. What documentation? Then you just wasted 10 minutes. I didn't waste it. I was busy trying to be perfect like your idols, your false idols. In your world, you're not perfect. In my world, I'm not perfect, okay? But barring perfect, who's perfect, who cares? We got a crazy, amazing, incredible show for everybody. I know. Almost. Every, you're ready, Dana. I'm ready. Here we go. So Fukushima, the first story is going to be about the rice, or no, any e news, but we're kind of got a little intro going on here. They've picked up, you see those green tarps in the background? That's um, part of the 30 million one-ton bags. So we'll get some good explanations of that's coming up. Now, they ran away and left the supermarkets full of food behind, but the resulting, this is the Guardian, the reactors are not repaired at all. With one more quake in Japan will cease to exist. So uh, reactors could take out a nuclear power plant. No, I'm not making it up. The Guardians weren't lying for a change. They were telling the truth. And so the reactor is actually gone. So with one more quake, Japan will cease to exist. Well, they had the quake. And Japan real, it exists, but it's so radiated. Everybody is so radiated. The illnesses take a decade or two to really... Well, in this case, it's showing up a lot quicker. We'll get to some of that. Resulting destruction will take half of planet with it. Half the planet with it. So when I showed you the pictures of the Fukushima expeditions earlier, that was half the planet with it. We killed the Pacific Ocean already. As that has gone into the Atlantic where we see supercell storms. It's so frightening that let alone, you know, four of these buildings They've had to uh, pick up 30 million one-ton bags. They're still picking them up, by the way. And they're growing food there, even though most of the people, only 4% of the people have moved back. There's, they've been growing food there right after the accident. They burnt money, the government did, to get people in there to grow food who were uh, naive and gullible and, and manipulable and malleable. So Geiger counters to check your feet means you were breeding radiation. You're not worried about getting it on your feet. You're worried about getting it in your body. The quickest way to get it in your body is to eat food from there or to even be in Japan, certainly. And when you think about the enormity of 30 million one-ton bags, the gravity of that much, then you can understand why I had 11 thumbs down. Let me fix that. Well, I had 11 thumbs down before the stream even started. Because, you know, like, normally I'm, like, I work so hard. Like, just to put the preamble up this morning, I had a headache when I finished trying to render. Then I got to transfer it over to another computer. Then I got to upload it and put tags in it. And literally wanted to throw up when I got that video uploaded this morning. I felt that miserable going through that process. Because they forced me now to come to another site. And that means every day I have to do stuff like that. People don't understand or are not able to wrap their mind around how difficult it is to put together something that, that, that's not too embarrassing. <laughs> 
Whatever, who cares? Nobody cares. Fukushima looks to ease blanket radiation checks on rice starting in 2020. So now they move the date up to 2020. We blasted them over the last month and a half, two months, over and over. Peach juice, sake, uh, ice cream that doesn't melt, it, like out of control. Okay. All right. Here we go. Any e news? Yeah. The E and E news is down. And they uh, went through a lot of work to try to hide their identity, apparently. And remember, there was an actual study. I covered it several years back, probably four years ago. There was a study done trying to figure out who E and E news was. How interesting was that? And these were the same people who were telling you that um, nuclear fallout is like a banana and a potato chip and walking in the sunshine for 74 years. So on my site, I had spam and comments. said, enenews.com has gone down after our campaign of mass reporting. And where will Dana Durford get his fake news from now to fill up his two hours of reading bullshit on his live streams from his handful of brain-dead followers? Just look, wow. All I do is provide the documentation. And this is what E&E News looks like over there. This is a picture that I, I put alongside of it. IAEA today admitted there is no such as... These are not fake news headlines. These are the blue links you see over there. And all of these stories right below it are linked directly over to the main story. They only put a small paragraph, not even that most times. And then they link you over to the original story. They don't have conjectures there, like the story itself. They just link you over to the story. Allowable radiation standards are based on benefit, not safety. There is no benefit for man-made radiation. This is why we call them dirty bombs. Now, at the same time, when I started up the site we're on now, where I got 11 thumbs down and before the video even started, they said, I give Dana's new channel 24 hours. We will have it taken down. Hey, it's 48 hours. You're full of shit, dog. Just saying. I would love to feed you that stuff there. I like to go down there. I might just sail across to Japan this summer to get some of that shit to come back, find you, and get you to eat it. I go get you some of that, but that's dead. So they left their animals to die because this, how is this bullshit? This is what really is scary. So any e news headline that's now missing. Every amount of radiation exposure increases your risk to cancer. There's no safe level. UC Santa Cruz nuclear expert warns a possible meltdown linked over to the Jan Joe's Mercury News. How is any e news? Now, any e news does put up Arnie Gunnarsson. Helen Kalerka and Christopher Busby, and they're full of shit. They're lawyers, and I've exposed them here for those lies. You can go to my other site, and you'll see those lies. <laughs> you ran away, left your animals behind, you goblins. And so I can now, once registration, or the site can't come back up. This is seven, seven days before the seventh anniversary of the Fukushima's meltdown. Child's risk of cancer from radiation tend to 100 times higher than an adult who has the same exposure. They were linked over to our RT story. Go watch it yourself. That's what they said in the story. This is the same as Drudge Report does, and, and a lot of media does the exact same thing where they take a small paragraph and link you over to it. In fact, that's what the majority of the, of the academic news sites rather are out there are doing. Just a couple more of these before we get into it. That headline over there, like I put these pictures here to give it some context. Significant risks and cancer risks within five years after exposure. This is the most horrifying picture imaginable where they got a Geiger counter on the school ground because they're trying to trick the children and the parents. They picked up 30 million one-ton bags. There's actually bags within sight of this facility. The kids are, can see bags. They're somewhere in their vision, for sure, that they picked up. They done this to trick the people to go back there. Not that they did, only 4%. And they done it now to trick them and have an Olympics there. And people might think that 
They're going to have a limping steer? Well, you're wrong. You're not. I'm going to make sure of it. <laughs> Nobody's going to go. They're going to cancel the Olympics in Tokyo, too. And Tokyo's destroyed, too, just like I showed you at the beginning of the video. Thyroid cancer risk lasts the entire life after radiation exposure. Leukemia risk peaks in a few years. Chicago Tribune. They just have to aggregate all this news about radiation and nuclear, and Fukushima in particular, and aggregate it at actor site. So they call it fake news or anything like that. I show you the fake news. I, I dissect it. That's why they call me, me, Dana Durnford, the nuclear proctologist.org. Uh, do, do you really think that I, that I want this job? Does anybody have to really, for one second, think that this is somehow trendy for me? This is radical for me, fun for me or something? This is, does anybody really think that all day, every day is not a fucking nightmare for me? Because you are wrong if you think that I have any normalcy in my life whatsoever. If anybody thinks for one second that I'm not dedicated to this, 24 hours a day, 1,440 minutes of my day, I can't escape it. I'm so, I'm so saturated with this, this information, I can't even consider uh, a social life or anything like that whatsoever. I have to be tuned in, switched on, ramped up 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, because nobody else will. We can't find somebody honest so I can take a break. I have thousands of hours underwater because I'm that personality anyway, where I can do shit that most people won't consider. And each day underwater was equal to two marathons on the human body. So the fact that I can get up and do a few things today after being sick for so long uh, is insignificant in, in my normal world. But I struggle all day, every day to tell these stories. And I'm 100% honest. And I'm just, I'm insulted that anybody on the planet would even consider that I'm not on the ball, or I'm not honest, or I'm not who I say I am. That is an insult to even imply that I'm not genuine or sincere. It's an insult to everybody on the solar system. Come on, man. Hang on, I'll be right back. Six. Yeah, and I can't even afford to turn my phone off, Fred. I miss a call or an interview with somebody who needs to know, and I get it all the time. I can't keep up with it. Can't keep up with anything, but I keep up with everything. Not only that, we have a, a small fleet of boats we're going to head out. Spring is coming in just a couple of weeks. I was out yesterday, it was pretty rough, and, you know, it's so difficult. It's so difficult just to get the boat out and underwater. It's so expensive to do everything. It's so inconceivable, nightmarish, time-consuming to get anything accomplished, and, and everything I set my, my sights on, I accomplish it no matter what. And now I've got to go back out for six or seven months on the ocean. And we've got to tug that whole operation. Like it might look like I, I could lose all this in a heartbeat on the ocean. Do you get how the ocean works? Like I know a lot of people have told me, Dana, you've you got a good little operation there. Is, yeah. And me and it could all be smashed up in a heartbeat and probably will. I got to do it all by myself, by myself. 
Got to go out there for seven months by myself and survive the Pacific Ocean to come back with the documentation to kickstart this disgusting fucking planet in a fighting for its life. And the other eight million species that are now facing an extinction event and we won't even try to slow down the extinction event. We don't, we're so self-centered, so, so egotistically caught up in people's little own little fucking words, worlds and political ideologies. We're going to let the planet perish rather than do something moral. Let the planet die rather than fight for the planet. Let all the people see. We can't save the planet until we save them. Do you get it? We got to fight for them to, to save ourselves. Sorry, I get a little cranky sometimes. Japan's worst case scenario assumes significant public exposure. Significant public exposure. But hey, I can got one of the most important sites on the planet taken down. That are, that are suspect, by the way. You know, E News is suspect. They're pumping out Ernie Gunnison's Reactor 4 fable while showing you headlines that Reactor 4 is not even there. And then putting them on a pedestal. But nevertheless, a very important site. Yeah? Because he aggregated the news that nobody else did. How can you eat food where they're doing this? Do you, do you think trying to find radiation in their hair is going to exclude them from radiation in their body? Because that's what the result was. Well, we didn't find no radiation, Dana. Yeah, but you did your check internal. No, why would we do that? Because he's freaking breathing. And you're a monster and got a history of it. Fukushima looks to ease blanket and radiation checks on rice starting in 2020. By the way, here's a study. The Fukushima nuclear disaster is ongoing 2016, May the 23rd. It is almost as if the effort is made to make the Fukushima problem disappear. That's one of the pictures they got there. They're talking about putting it in the bags, yeah? A more useful response would be to openly acknowledge the monumental problems inherent in managing a nuclear plant disaster. Monumental. 30 million one-ton bags, not counting what they're excreting at the sewage systems right across the country. To go to Japan is suicidal. Down the road, you die from that radiation exposure. How could you be that idiotic to go to a place like this? Oh, we picked up bags. Good for you. The bags only meant to last a year. They're there for seven years. Now they're rotted. You ran away and left your schools, your, your car lots, brand new car lots, your motorcycle lots, your brand new motorcycles, brand new yachts and boat facilities and everything else. You ran away and left your hospitals full of freaking victims. You left your liquor stores full of liquor. You left your, your banks full of money, your, your casinos full of money and just ran away. Left it all behind, never went back. You're growing food there and trying to ship it to other countries to try to build an image again. It's literally the most demented thing conceivable. Even a, like Hollywood would never uh, try to come up, and Hollywood would go any kooky story whatsoever. There's no way Hollywood would have come up with this scenario. Like if I had to wrote this pre-Fukushima, everybody like, this is so stupid. That can't happen. This is Hollywood's this stupid. Yeah, but in real life, it's like, wow, you know, people should go back. Look, they picked up all the fucking bags, Dana. I put you in a bag. And then every one of these fake stories, you'll see the same words. It has been learned. It has been learned. Over and over and over, I've isolated those four words, haven't I? How many stories have we seen this? It has been learned. No names, no, no scientific information. You pick up 30 million one-ton bags, see, I mean, you, you abandon your community was the right thing. Picking up the 30 million one-ton bags was sacrifice victims because that's not Harvard University picking that up or their students or their academics or their alumni or anybody else. All rice will remain subject to be checked for the time being in 12 municipalities where evacuation orders were issued. So 
why are you growing rice where evacuation orders were issued? How did we get that stupid? Other areas will switch to random checks, yeah? Well, it was okay on this side of the banks, but on the other side, we found a little bit downhill. Ah, we're allowed a little bit. They made it start up that fucking firm. Other areas will switch to random checks. You should all check out of Japan. All locally grown rice has been subject to the checks since 2012. They've been growing there since 2012, and they're still picking up fucking bags there. Why are they growing it there when the people are still gone? Why were they doing it in 2012? Because they intended to grow the rice and everything there. This is, where, this is the rice field, by the way, where they're growing rice. The maniacs. Like, we're, we're, we're actual talking about... They're, see, because you got seven generations of nuclear inbreeds, and the current generation are just... They're monsters. Literally monsters every step of this way. Rarely puts their name on an article anymore. All locally rice grown between 2015 and 17 came in below the safety limits. 100 beckles a kilogram. By the way, radioactive cesium in 25 to 26 food samples. I'm missing a headline. Hang on. Go back and hit that one again in a second. That's what I mean. Like, you cannot keep up, right? You can't keep up. You can't possibly keep up a... Hang on. Yeah, the crazies. Why is this gonna be so hard for me today? I wonder. Start the stream again. Here we go, I'll find it. There it is. So, I'm going back and visit that headline. Look, this is the one I forgot to do this morning for some reason. All local rice grown between 215 and 217 came in below the safety limits. Now, before that, they had a limit of 500 becquels a kilogram. Safety limits of uh, 100 becquels per kilogram, they say. And radioact, I'm sorry, 100 becquels a kilogram. Pre Fukushima, 100 becquels was packaged up and put on a nuclear waste sites. Now it's safe to eat. If the 2018, 2019 harvests are also found to be within the standards, standards made by them, by idiot machines, by monsters, seven generations of murderers, the checks will go random starting in 2020 in areas outside the 12 evacuated municipalities. They're not growing it out there, they're growing it here in the, in the evacuated zones trying to get people to move back in. Just a handful of corporations, the nuclear industry, the mining companies, the mining, the uranium mining companies, uranium stock exchange people. This is what's funding all this. Some have criticized the blanket checks is too costly. I bet they have. Japan government promotes the idea that you're racist if you're avoiding Fukushima product. How about that headline, you little piece of shit? Some have criticized the blanket checks. The manager of the Fukushima number one plant in Tokyo, Electric Coal and Company, says they're up there walking on the roof of a building last week that don't even exist, by the way. We don't know if it was a hydrogen explosion, blah, 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 blah. Reactor blew up, not reactor building. Somebody should tip, go, show Tepco that picture. Radioactive water accumulations contained was another bizarre, bizarre, unbelievable headline yesterday. Contained. Contained. Look at it. It's contained. Like, uh, it's, they picked up 30 million bags, stupid. The operator of the Fukushima nuclear power plant said on Friday has managed to control accumulation of contaminated water in the plant. Can you control the pollen too? The pollen that's grown, uh, plants are grown out of that bag. That's not the plant they're talking about, by the way. This is part of the 30 million one ton. There's 120,000 sites like it. In a press conference in Tokyo on Friday, 
TEPCO's chief de decommissioning officer said the operator had gone from treating the plant as a war zone. Like, it's only the homeless, the destitute, the victims of society, the immigrants who don't speak the language that are going in there. The nuclear industry is not looking for volunteers from other nuclear power plants to go there. <laughs> no, they're getting the destitute and the victims of society only. Nuclear explosion may have occurred. Who cares? It's gone. All over the site, too, where only the homeless go, because there's lethal doses around the site. Oh, TEPCO and the government stressed the success of the different systems used to reduce the accumulation radioactive water in the plant, including construction of underground ice wall. Now, according to that, the underground ice wall, they had 260,000 people to build an ice wall. They got 7,000 working on... Um, on the nuclear power plant every day, we've never seen a picture of more than 10 people. And they, they say they got 260,000 people went in there and built an ice wall. And where all the ice wall, like this, is, the reason they built the ice wall was because if they built a real wall, not that that would work, but if they built the real walls, because all they're doing is trying to stop the water from flowing through the plant from the mountains and the rain and the snow still goes in there, right, and floods everything. If you build a, a, a perfect wall, every time it rains and snows, the whole site becomes flooded. And liquefaction becomes a, a major issue, a stability issue. Well, think of, uh, think of that picture. They're growing rice. Look at all the bags. See the bags? That's under tarps. <laughs> People in rain. Yeah, yeah. I didn't find any radiation. Go ahead and fire that baby up. Only the fact that the containment vessels were flooded with seawater to prevent radiation leaks. They were flooded with seawater, were they? The, the, the freaking things were blowing out of the building. I just, just never mind. I'll start screaming here in a second. It's going to give me a heart attack. Only to the fact that the containment vessels were flooded with seawater to prevent the radiation. Oh, yeah. Flooded with seawater. Woo! Look at the homeless. Yeah, but they're growing food right there, too, remember? They're just demons. Containment vessels was flooded with seawater to prevent the radiation leak. No, it wasn't, folks. The radiation is all over that country, North America. The main risk that such efforts will carry will be the possible radioactive leaks or exposure of workers to the radiation. Exposure of workers to the radiation. You know, what about the people in those villages? What about the people foolish enough to grow rice there that ends up eating it? Protect the workers. What about everybody else on the planet and the other 8 million species? And by the way, the workers are the homeless, the destitute, the victims of society. They ain't, they ain't TEPCO employees. An underground wall of frozen soil surrounding the strict and Fukushima number one nuclear power plant that blocks Groundwater from flowing into the plant is cut back on the amount of radiation tainted water that is generated by an estimated 95 metric tons a day. So people are actually stupider than rocks. 95 tons a day, eh? You're talking about a massive facility, by the way. Incredible size of a facility. Every time it the whole country is covered when it's every time it rains or snows or blows. If the wind even blows across the reactor, you're talking about an event all day. You're having an event on that day. When the wind blows across that, it's radiated wind. You heard of tritiated water? Well, there's radiated wind, tritiated wind per se. You know, these 95 metric tons a day, it's probably 95 metric tons a minute or something that runs through the site from the mountains behind it. And so there's always a bit of truth in their stories. You just got to figure out what it is they're trying to actually hide. Because the ice wall was never built by 260,000 people, all right? This is ludicrous assertions. That means they made $1,100 each and they didn't buy no equipment and they didn't use anything. Blah, 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 blah. It's a ludicrous assertion. And so the ice wall would only go down in the ground, the water runs underneath it. 
They, they built that because the taxpayers had to pay for it, right? Somebody made money. And just follow the money, right? And you'll find the demons every time. We actually got a story about that. If uh, we'll ever get to it, who knows? The fact they're checking everybody meant they were irradiated. They done that to trick them and deceive and manipulate them. Tourist destination, see this, you got an actor and now he becomes used as a tool to murder everybody. He's now a tool to kill them, see? He's a, he's a tool to kill these people now. In that town where he's born, all 20 calves born at a farm were still birds. I think that's a picture from the town of Murmur. Or that. Japanese actor Dean uh, Fujoka has, Joka, good name, has suddenly become a hot topic among, now Indonesia is where they're shipping a lot of the rice and the peaches from, and the fruit and the vegetables from the most radiated place on earth. They're doing this to trick people to go in there. The people that are doing it are not even protected. The average weather in the city located in Fukushima Prefecture, one degrees. So they're trying to get tourists to come to the most radiated place on the planet where everybody ran away, where they're growing the most radiated food on the planet. Like, woo! Six and ten of the children tested there, by the way, had diabetes. Diabetes shows up long before cancer. Alzheimer's, dementia, autism shows up before the cancers. Heart, liver, lung, respiratory, pituitary, adrenaline, thyroid, gland issues throw up, show up long before cancer. Cancer is the last one to show up. There's 1,800 illnesses, diseases, autoimmune deficiencies, injuries will show up long before the cancer. Rice grown nearby Fukushima plant cleared for sale. That's the same town where the tourists are took, where that actor was born. I would not dare eat it, says the farmer. We feel guilty growing it and selling it. Yeah, we grow it. It's beautiful. It grows much bigger, sooner. It tastes so sweet. The tourists can meet the Japanese movie characters, such as Ultraman. And then the water falls. Now, by the way, all the water down there is highly contaminated. But uh, you got Minnesota on one side. And Iwati on the other side is straight back from all that. Woo! That's just the wrong. That's whole place is covered in these bags. One ton bags. 30 million one ton trucks to carry them bags away. There's five rows of traffic around the planet. We got to fight for the planet. They're going to destroy everything. You said, do you understand the meaning of D? This is a farmer from that same town where that where that uh, actor is too. He said, we're just tilling deeply and spreading the radiation thinly. We're not removing the contamination. They bring in soil and mix it, then it's less per kilogram, then he call it safe. Because this is what idiots do. This is what demons do. So Japan silenced critics 11 days before Fukushima. I posted that video to tell that story of what they got done to me. And Fukushima a Meltdown, new live streaming site, first show. This is the site you're on right now. So I got 22,000 subscribers there. I can't use it because 11 days before Fukushima, they came for me. YouTube hits Infowar with third strike as free speech purge goes nuclear. Do you get it? Free speech purge goes nuclear. They're going after the, because it's the 11th anniversary of the Fukushima nuclear meltdown to purge in the internet of people like me. And so Alex Jones is a puppet. He came out and browbeat the industry right away. He showed all kinds of stuff like that. And then, then he, he turned it off. He said, and people he brought on his show, even Paul Joseph Watson and um, the rest of them were talking about raid on. He brought on Christopher Busby, who said the jet streams there was no way for it to make it over there, yet there's models available. It's really shocking what they've done here. And Alex has turned into some weirdo, uh, 
with a political agenda where he's pumping out people like Drudge Report in every one of his shows for several years straight now. Drudge Report is all mainstream media, all fluff. It's the duty of the scientific community to reduce the public's fear and anxiety about radiation. It's the duty of the scientific community to reduce the public's fear. That's what Alex is doing. He's working for those people, yeah? For sure. For sure, and I can, I can quantify that. Play title, Kill Climate Deniers Launches a Theatrical Run. Kill Climate Deniers. Now, I got six gag orders for allegedly, say, kill uh, mouthpieces for the nuclear industry. And I can't tell you who they are because they gave me six gag orders. Such is life. Title, Kill Climate Deniers. Now, they got funded by Australia, who, by the way, produces 30% of the uranium, produced this particular uranium that caused the death of the Pacific Ocean was Australia. We wouldn't expect to see health effects in children, workers, or anyone. UN Committee Chairman studied Fukushima radiation impact. The play was commissioned in 2014 with a $19,000 grant from the Australian government. And the Australian government, Australia is one of the biggest producers of uranium on the planet for nuclear power plants and missiles and bombs and everything else. And then you have uh, six times more breast cancer around nuclear power plants that don't melt down. Like, so... Is it any big surprise that Australia was out fun in that one? A shocking betrayal. Australia's responsible for this. See, thyroid issues for children is normally one in a million. That was, uh, now Japan had already had nuclear power for 30 years or so at that stage. It was one in a million. After Fukushima, it went to 13,646, not out of a million, but out of 38,000. So this is an event. See, when I started the video, I'm not the first two minutes. <laughs> They're still trying to make a cup of tea, by the way. Slurp. And he took out, Alex got taken down so that everybody else didn't feel bad. Oh, they took down Alex Jones too. He's got a couple of million viewers. They're purging everybody. No, no. This is about silencing Fukushima narrative. They want the Olympics because a handful of corporations can make a lot of money and evil doesn't have a limit on how evil it can be. And this headline here is means that's the end of Japan. To bring your children there, you're going to end up on that same statistics. To send the Olympic athletes there, you're going to end up in the same statistics just within a few years of that. Right, the illnesses don't show up for a couple of years. By saying government donates to a project urging others to kill fellow citizens, even as a joke. Australia, UN's uh, committee chairman studying uh, Fukushima radiation impact. Oh, or, or you wouldn't expect to see health effects in children, workers, anyone else. Seven people died on a single street where the Olympic uh, participants will be shopping. Seven people died on that street too. Now, that's just one street. There's other streets like it, you can be sure. You can't have one without the other. And they're going to be eating this shit because that's how evil Japan actually is. They have every intention of feeding that to everybody who goes to the Olympics. Oh, you're with the Olympics? Well, we got to get the good rice for you. <laughs> Stupid. Look at the bags. 30 million one-ton bags. They're growing rice in that same area where people don't even live and complaining because nobody would eat it. The media. Your media should be lynched. They're the dirt. Never mind. Radioactive debris piling up at the Fukushima interim facilities. Think about this. That's bags, right? Bags containing radioactive soil are piling up at a storage facility where just right where they're going to have the Olympics, right by this place, by the way. That's where the sports fields are in that same town. Like real-life demons, real-life idiots, 
Stacks of soil and other ways contaminated by the Fukushima nuclear disaster continue to grow. They got 120,000 sites to move, continue to grow. Yeah. See, you can never go back here. Like, it's, it's over the top what we're talking about. You got to get your mind around it. The interim facility is expected to eventually cover 1,600 hectares. That's roughly a little under that 15 square kilometers. They're going to store bags over that whole area. Look, they're going to store these bags temporarily. Woo! Yeah, no issues. Has acquired 801 hectares already. 70% of that area is already covered with contaminated debris, not bags. Not bags, but debris. They like to conflate bags and debris so you don't understand the true significant numbers. But 801 hectares is 8 square kilometers. Of not bags, but debris. There's 30 million one-ton bags, and now all the debris too. I can't remember, 30 million tons or something of debris just in one little area of radiated debris, radiated from the nuclear fallout. The government plans to move the contaminated debris to a final disposal site outside the prefecture in March 2045. However, it has difficulty finding local governments willing to accept the waste. Well, they got 120,000 sites out there where they didn't want the waste and you've done it. So they're just making stories up to so why they didn't get the job done. They don't get the job done because Harvard and Yale and Berkeley and Stanford, Oxford, MIT ain't going there. Nuclear plant workers are not volunteering worldwide to go there and clean it up. Oh, I'm going to go there and make some easy money. No, you go there and get a lethal dose. You die, you die later. Seven years after Fukushima editorial, Fukushima is still struggling to return to normal. So what kind of editorial is that? What do you mean it's still struggling? It'll ne it's not supposed to struggle. It's supposed to be abandoned. Almost one year has passed since the evacuation order for four municipalities around the room. Fukushima, number one nuclear power plant, was lifted to make it possible for local residents to return home. To make it possible. They, they were lifted to make it possible. No. You got to dig up that whole country and bring it to another country and process it. You can't just store it in bags. It never stops coming out of the nuclear power plant. So unbelievable betrayal. See? Editorial. What, what do you expect? When you see the words editorial, you know it's betrayal. These towns and villages lack many of the functions and facilities to meet the essential needs of people, such as housing and shopping and health and nursing care and jobs and community. No, the fucking place is radiated. They don't want nothing to do with us. But you don't show that, do you? You don't show nothing. You just put your conjectures that are mass produced by the nuclear industry there to manipulate everybody instead of documentation saying, nobody wants to go down that fucking road. <laughs> this is the reason why many people, many of the local residents have not returned home despite an end to forced evacuations. Oh, there was forced evacuation, but now they want them to go back. The forced evacuations. Like you got to be really stupid to not get it. Just if you've made it through this video, you've never seen this before, and now you still don't get it, you're, you qualify as fucking stupid. This is the reason why many of the local residents, no, this is the reason. That is the reason. They're on the way there. They're like, oh, Jesus, more radiation bags. I never seen that many bags in my life anywhere, honey. Turn the car around. But they're going to give us, they're going to give us a cheaper place to rent. Turn the car around, dummy. So if you're driving there and they, and they told you, well, there's, we, got, we picked it all up, it's all clean, you're driving, you pass 120,000 through that zone, you're, you're going to have some doubt, I hope. Otherwise, I got no idea how you got your driver's license. Editorial, yeah. A survey, a survey. 
A survey of evacuees. There's the evacuees' homes. A survey of evacuees by one local government found 50% of the residents have no plan to return. A survey. You don't need a survey to know it's not safe to go back. There's no reason to have a survey. It's not safe to go back is a better way to put it. But it's also true that many of the people who left their towns and villages in the wake of the catastrophic accident, see, they say, but it's also true that many of the people, by saying that 50% had no plans, then by proxy, it's also true that many of the people who left their town. So two lies, one right after another. The survey never even happened, I can guarantee you. It was just, this is the problem with grammar. They do this to trick you. Who cares if they want to go back, bird brain? It's scum. That media is such scum, though, eh? We covered so many stories of these gob, actual real-life goblins. They're not media. They're just monsters. They, they, were, they might have been media one time, but they were bought by public relations firms. Just so disgusting. It is the government's important role to make things easier for evacuees to return to their former communities if you want to do so by supporting the current lives. It is the government's important role to make evacuees go back. What the freak? So these people are literally out of control to even suggest that that is even a reality. Progress is only possible through hard, tenacious work and constant adjustment for the better. Yeah? Harvard University never went to Fukushima nuclear power plant a single time. Yale University, their students, nuclear students, nuclear academics, nuclear alumni, nuclear institutions, nobody goes there, only the destitute, the victims of society. And there's a reason for it, besides the fact that the nuclear melts down. Hang on. I got a couple of headlines. We'll tell that story very quick. Oh, yeah. So some of this stuff is just downright scary, eh? Let's tell that story very quick. One full siever. Now, three sievers is a lethal dose. One siever is an absolutely insanity dose. And a child, this is uh, so despicable and disgusting, it's hard to not lash out in absolute contempt. Fukushima reactors will be releasing radioactive steam. Now get a load of this. 4.7 sievers coming out of the ground in steam. Covers everything in the area. But it didn't just like a few seconds of it, year after year. It's a lethal dose to walk past it, let alone to breathe it. It's a guaranteed you're going to die shortly after, at most within a few weeks. It's a lethal dose. And then we see media. We've got to stop those sorts of reports coming out. And who else but Jerry Thomas at the Imperial College of London, who's actually treating children for radioactive fallout. I'm sorry, for uh, with radiation who have cancer, with radiation that kills him. Jerry Thomas is a killer. We covered her many times. See, pieces of uh, cement with a siever an hour. It was probably, you can usually multiply it by 10. Whatever numbers they tell you, you should multiply it by 10. Fukushima plants say the ground under the facility is cracking and radioactive steam is... A Fukushima plants say the ground under the facility is cracking and radioactive steam is escaping through the crack. Yeah, we're talking up to 10 sievers in, in six places in another headline. Let me bring that up right quick. Sometimes I screw up, eh? There we go. Might as well bring the rest of it on board at the same time. Oh, crap. Burger said the ground is cracking and steam is coming up. 10 sievers. Three is a lethal dose just walking by it. This is uh, 20 times the speed. I'm going to make it. I'm going to jump. The whole site gets covered in that radioactive steam. 
And then the whole site is not in, it's two lead, it's a leader in these tanks is two sievers. These are lethal doses. This is not something we can put, just release into the ocean ever under any circumstances. I got to get back to that spot. I'll never find it, will I? Hang on. Oh, well, we'll find it. There it is. Let's keep going. In NAMI, I just showed you a headline before that of NAMI. Uh, one full siever in NAMI. In NAMI, a town located north of the nuclear plant, the newly built elementary junior high school, which is to open this spring. And of course, NAMI, one siever for a child in their thyroid. It meant they had. This is a lethal dose for a child. And they're going and they built a new school there to trick people into going back. And they've done that a lot. Most of the money that was spent there, besides bags, was for new facilities. Because the other facilities are destroyed and they know it. Each child receives more sufficient attention at a school with a small number of students, I believe. Yeah? They're not supposed to be there. It is a disgusting parasite. They talk about Iwati. Now, this is Iwati picture. Iwati is supposed to be abandoned a very long time ago. The opening of the school would be an important step forward in the effort to rebuild NAMI. Why are you even considering rebuilding a place that's highly mad, uh, that's destroyed with radiation? Why would you do that? How'd you get that evil? Why not build it somewhere else? It's not sustainable. It's not tenable. You can't, even if everybody moved back, everybody was going to start to die right away. You can't eat the food there, yet you're shipping it everywhere else. The, the fuel pools are all over that town. That's why they picked up 30 million one-ton bags. Only about 10 students are expected, though. Because the students are not making the decisions. They wouldn't go there if they, if they were capable. It's child abuse to bring your child to Iwati or Fukushima. It's child abuse. It's murder to take anybody there. Many evacuated residents have been discouraged from returning to town, but it's slow progress in the restorations of the living environment. No, it's not. They don't want to go back into the radiated environment. You can never remediate it. You can never restore it. Picking up bags does not restore it. You can't grow food there, but that's the intentions of what they're doing there. You'll be stupid to go back. Local residents have to drive dozens of minutes to shop at the nearest supermarket that's not even supposed to exist. In order for a supermarket to exist in those areas, you can do an incredible amount to pick up work to trick people into going back. Supermarket's probably right there. See, it's not bad enough that you have all the other issues. You're trying to bring children in. Is is truly sickening. Like you qualify as evil on every facet of that word. Let's spin through the rest of it. The government strategy aims at encouraging evacuated residents of these communities to return home. By stepping up the decommission and decontamination efforts has failed to work as expected. Yeah, the de decommissioning, there's no such thing as decommissioning. You got to do this every day for the rest of your life, for the rest of humanity, to make it even reasonable to hang out there for a few hours. Once you had an accident, that's the end of it. That runs into the river, the red river goes down, feeds lakes, the estuaries, streams. The drinking water tables, the rice patties, you're like you're stupid to even consider being in this area. Everybody's suffering from the radiation. To break this never ending cycle, the central and local government needs to come up with better ideas to improve the living environment. Yeah, you gotta give them all paper suits that can't protect you from jack shit. Pick up bags and pretend that you solved some of the equation. This is ludicrous to even suggest. You're vicious thugs. 
There have been troubling signs that the government's policy to support the reconstruction disaster hit area tends to focus on the building of new facilities. Not for this. So you got to cut down all the trees on top of that. Every time the wind blows, you shower with cesium, uranium, plutonium. It never stops. And you can't find the interior. You find some of the isotopes, you can't find the others. Costly projects to build various facilities, such as research development institutions in the areas of energy and robotics, large sports facilities are on their way. Why are you building sports facilities? To, right? Because they're the most vulnerable. Sports, sports addicts don't understand radiation at all. So trick them into going there. Right? The, the athletes are not out there learning anything. They're there in the gym or in, um, in the water, whatever it is they do. They're, they're practicing their sport. They're not trying to figure out nuclear technology, whether it's safe. Like, why would you pick all of these bags up in those communities? You got to raz all the buildings, all the roads, all the telephone poles, all the sidewalks got to go. You got to find a spot to put all of that, and you got to rebuild it all. And then, because the chain reaction is ongoing at the nuclear power plants, within a few days, it's all covered again. If you have big wind, the forest will cover everything again. Because the forest, all the pollen from all the plant in the spring radiates everything. Once you touch something with radiation, it can radiate other things. This was meant to pacify the victims, to trick them and deceive and manipulate them. Local government chiefs are forging ahead with public works projects to build facilities in a rush to take advantage of the central government's budget for post-disaster reconstruction while the money is available. In other words, they're, there, they're building it and doing all that stuff in those communities because that's their opportunity to loot the money for themselves so they can go off and retire somewhere else early. That's exactly it and only it that, that's the reason that they're going into these environments. These people are supposed to be evacuated, not manipulated. The 33-year-old woman here who runs a restaurant in one of these abandoned communities that they re try to reunite used to work in the Tokyo metropolitan area but decided to start the business in the town after she became involved in a project to help people acquire the skills and abilities needed for the reconstruction of the affected community. So this, we're not talking about Harvard University or Yale University or Stanford University or MIT, MIT University or any major institution or any institution. You're talking about an idiot training the victims of society because they can make a dollar. They give them the skills that they don't even have and the abilities that they don't even have, they're going to try to, to pass it on to people that are unfortunately incompetent and incapable and are vulnerable. That doesn't mean they're bad people. It just means they've been beat down their whole life and they don't have the social skills to understand the, the, the significance of what's really going on there including the people holding on to the Geiger counters. They don't understand what they're even doing. We flushed this out many times. Lydia will soon launch a program to expend toys and communications with other parts of the nation. The program dubbed Furu Sato Jumiyato Hometown Certification of Residents will involve various attempts to convey information to people outside who want to support the town. Nobody wants to support the town. We want you to leave the town. We want to support the people so they can leave the town and get on with their lives instead of putting them in purgatory where you know they're going to end up with vicious illnesses and diseases. How can you do it to the children, you disgusting parasites? That's why you tried to take me down over and over. We will test various ideas designed to build a new village instead of trying to restore the village to its former state, said the mayor of uh, Lydia. Because the village is radiated to... The trees are radiated, the buildings, the sidewalks, the roads. Everything is irradiated. The interior of the buildings are irradiated. This is why he's talking about it. But see, he's a monster even suggest that you can build it there because it's all going to be contaminated again immediately. They're only doing this to pacify the parents that have the money to go investigate things. Seven years since the calamitous nuclear accident, people in Fukushima are still facing a grim reality. And fighting an uphill battle to find a way to regain an environment enables them to enjoy a peaceful and quiet daily life. 
There's no such thing as a peaceful and quiet daily life because you're going to get illnesses and diseases and, and rectal problems. What must not be forgotten is the grave fact that the accident occurred in connection with the government's long-running policy promoting nuclear power generation. So at the, end, at the end of all the lies and manipulation and deceptions, they put some redeeming qualities there. Good for you. I would love to knock your teeth down your throat of every catcher. Not the kid, but the people who wrote the article and refuses to put their name on it. Our society is facing a serious test of whether it can keep this in mind and commit itself as a whole to supporting the affected community struggles to rebuild themselves. What are you talking about? Our society is facing a serious test of whether you could be lynched by the entire community. They should find you and lynch you. You should be lynched right on the spot, sir. Ma'am. It. It. Idiot. Lydia, rather. That's the name of the place, right? Radiated cows. Selling the meat, too. Shipping it to North America because they don't want to feed it their own. Enough cancer over there. Did this is the last story? It's a doozy, though. <laughs> I burned through it. Ooh, I, I'm glad I got this stream out of the way because we had all this junk all week. We had to get rid of it. Tell the story. They're decommissioned the forest to trick people to go back in. Look at that. Homeless, destitute victims of society all dressed up and no home to go to. As evacuees move back, Fukushima cleanup faces daunting obstacles. Dennis Normill. Normilly. Now, he has no, he never wrote a story about nuclear before. He has no history of nuclear. He don't know nothing about nuclear. And yet he comes out with this story in 2017, March the 2nd, just before the 6th anniversary. I put that picture in there. He puts pictures in people bent over with the connotations. Workers decontaminate a forest. Now, he is very friendly to Japan, I noticed in some of his stories, but he doesn't know anything about nuclear, and his other, he doesn't talk about nuclear, but he brought up, this is one of his, his only story on nuclear out there, and he tries to convince unsuspecting readers that it's okay. Why would you go here? How could you, how could you do this and suggest people should go there? Picking it up meant the place is unbelievable radioactive. But the mayor from uh, Lydia wants to raz the town and build a new one somewhere else. The tsunami also knocked out Fukushima systems for cooling its nuclear reactors. So if it loses water, it needs a million gallons a minute. This reactor, by the way, runs all the way to the top of the building. And the reactor cores were stored at the top of the building. As you can see in reactor three over there, they're all gone. He doesn't show you these two pictures, does he? No. Causing core meltdowns. They're not meltdowns, they're ejected the core and the reactor cores that were stored at the top of the building. The visible hot mass floated in the air and fell for hours. It reached Tokyo. They call it a diluted version. Of course, it's going to be diluted after traveling a couple of hundred miles, but it ain't diluted that much. It radiated Tokyo. On the eve of the sixth anniversary of the disaster, this is when this article came out, by the way, but I singled it out because I wanted to tell that story. TEPCO made Fukushima plant into a machine, a machine for generating radioactive water. It's a machine. And air cooled, if you try to, and you can't air cool it because the air goes over, it's a machine too, it becomes radioactive. Officials took pride in what they viewed as successful efforts to minimize the health threats to the surrounding communities. Took pride, officials, dummies with no education and were inbreeded into the job. The only farmer left in Fukushima town shipped broccoli and lettuce 2012, folks. Oh, his vegetables are tasty and have a rich flavor. You got 30 million one-ton bags. Why would, you, why would you grow food there right away? Why would you ship it right away? That, that meant the government was absolutely disgusting. Just that one headline there proves the government uh, was completely corrupted. How could that happen? How is that even possible? Everybody ran away, but there's a farmer there, and he grew some food. It was tasty, rich in flavor. Radiation from the crippled reactor is no longer having an impact outside the plant. 
says that Brazer, 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 and we'll get to him in a second. Radiation from the crippled Fukushima reactor is no longer having an effect. <clears throat> Uh, environment abruptly changed for half of Japan, half of Japan, Tokyo and everything north of it. You cannot eat food or be hanging out there, not even for a few hours. Like you don't get how dangerous a single exposure is. It doesn't drop you right away. Well, it could down here, absolutely. Including Tokyo. I mean, we've seen Tokyo at 500,000, 500 billion Beckles a kilogram. And so for peroxide hydrogen buckyballs, you only need a, a fraction of 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 a percent of a fraction of a percent of a percent of a fraction to get a, a serious illness. He noted that the evacuated residents were returning to their homes as decontamination work reduces exposure levels below the threshold. By the way, no. Former Prime Minister, half the people in Japan were close to being evacuated. They were supposed to be evacuated, but you didn't pull the plug. You didn't pull the pin on it. And radiation levels just offshore remain below the limit for drinking water set by the World Health Organization, who, by the way, stabbed everybody in the back over and over and over and over and over. This is shocking that children are getting their pictures by these machines. This is horrifying that that exists. Japanese, Japanese uh, Deputy Prime Minister in 2013 had previously said to let the elderly people hurry up and die. See, everybody dies, including him and his, his friends, his family, his loved ones. Not that he's capable of that, but those who are foolish enough to love him. Stemming ocean contamination has been a thorny challenge. Yeah. How about, uh, okay for like Japanese times, disgusting Japanese times, okay for babies to drink radioactive milk because adults have natural potassium in their body. So this, this is one of the, the laws we've heard now for, uh, for uh, 74 years. It's like a banana or walking in the sunshine or getting on an airplane or sleeping next to somebody. It's good for you. It's natural. It's everywhere. It's like climbing a mountain. It's like the radiation from the sun. These are all lies, folks. 74 years. Like the coal releases more radiation than nuclear power. These are unbelievable, un unimaginable, deceptive lies for 74 years. Anybody says that you have anybody that tells you that lie in a public uh, speaking, public lectures or something like that, it's okay to string them up for the whole audience to run up, grab them, string them up, hang them right on the spot. Given the progress, he reiterated that TEPCO is confident they can stick to the previously set roadmap that envisions completing the decommissioning 30 to 40 years. Yeah, but it's, there's no more out there, there's no more here, there's no more there. It's just at the power plant. Stop listening to Dana. 30 million one ton bags, 120,000 sites. These people are out of control. They're out of control. Since early in the crisis, crews have circulated water through the damaged reactor to prevent overheating. To prevent overheating. Like, woo! Man, you're going to go big. Might as well go big, big, I suppose. Overheating. We're not worried about overheating. Because it doesn't exist, you freak of nature. The building is completely gone. You despicable monster. Just cowards. Schemes to divert the groundwater away from the plant and freeze a wall of soil around the reactor down to the bedrock contain contaminated water have minimized leaks. White blood cell counts spike in the Fukushima workers from the gamma shot and the x-rays and neutron bursts. 3,000 may not have used dosimeters at the plant. These were the homeless and the destitute and the victims of society, the most vulnerable of society. In the meantime, TEPCO's accumulated 960,000 tons. They actually have got uh, just 300,000 tons. There's 300,000 tons in each of these tanks. So three of these tanks is a million tons. Yeah? 
So they're lying to you, manipulating and deceiving you every step of the way. TEPCO's removed the cesium and the strontium and 50 other radionuclides from that water, but they've been stoned by the tritium. Hey, we done an export. The last video was on tritium, right? Go back and watch that. The radioactive hydrogen isotope in the water. No, like on the planet before nuclear was around 100 kilograms in all the oceans combined of tritium from the sun. Right, H, uh, HO, tritium uh, was harmless and innocuous and benign. But the stuff from the chain reaction, uh, it gives you bone cancer, it gives you all kinds of illnesses and diseases. And by the way, as I showed you the headlines earlier, there's a liter of the water is two sievers. So tritium and strontium and... What they were talking about was meant, we we're tracers, by the way, meant all the other isotopes are there. But the water itself is lethal. It's lethal. This is not tritium. This is a deception what they're running on you. This is a game they're running against you. Right? They do that and they say to the mom, no, no, the child's okay. Now, the people holding on to it are probably good people, don't know any better. They were given a garter counter and said, if it beeps really heavy, tell the boss. And it's calibrated not to do nothing. No, you're good. You run away and leave your supermarkets behind because it's like a banana and a potato chip walking in sunshine, yeah? No. And we're almost through it. By 10, easy to go. 15, 16, 17 more depictions. Half of these one sentence is the other half are pictures. Tritium occurs naturally in water. Well, the tritium from the Fukushima nuclear meltdown that caused everybody to run away and leave everything behind that's not, not, that's not the stuff that's in the water. So you can't trust them, and they should be held accountable for even suggesting those words. Half a million people to have been evacuated around Fukushima. No, they ran away on their own before the evacuation orders were issued. Some of these communities weren't evacuated for three months. You're talking about actual real-life goblins. Simply releasing the tritium-laden water, perhaps even after dilution, is one disposal uh, option said the Fukushima Mamopes from TEPCO. Another would be to evaporate the water. This is a frightening words, by the way. Several million will, be needed to, will need to be evacuated from around the Fukushima plant to the government and use the same scale as Chernobyl. Japan's handling the disaster far worse than the Soviet Union, indeed. Releasing some treating in the atmosphere was done after Three Mile Island. Some? They spent two years boiling off the, the radiated water from Three Mile Island. Two years boiling it off. You know where most of that went? Into the communities and into the local estuaries and rivers and lakes. Like actual, and now Arnie Gunnarsson was at Three Mile Island doing that. That was Arnie who was doing this. This wasn't tritium, folks. These, this is lethal doses that are evaporating. The people Arnie had there, he said he, they were only getting... And Arnie was trying to be smart about it when the accident in Fukushima first happened up on CNN. He said, well, I used to send people into Three Mile Island for three minutes. These are lethal fucking doses you're talking about. TEPCO president apologizes for accident at the Fukushima Daini nuclear plant, not just Diachi. Look at a child walking past all these bags. How is that even possible? Your nuclear industry is so revolting. Your climate scientists are so revolting. Their solution to climate change is nuclear power plants. You're despicable monsters. The advisory committee is now studying the problem and will hold discussions with local community. So TEPCO will be able to act in a responsible manner. TEPCO has never acted in a responsible manner. What? Responsible by sending children in the harm's way. A corporation is going to have some responsibility when there's no checks and balances. Former Tokyo police chief, TEPCO wanted to withdraw from the Fukushima Daini, not only Diachi. Because it wasn't just Fukushima Diachi that melted down. Having Olympics there is a no-brainer. But a handful of corporations with evil intentions are trying to make that so. We're the light, dear to dark. We're going to shine the light on them. We catch them, we'll kick the shit out of them, but we'll shine the light on them. TEPCO is now thinking it might need a robot able to jump over debris. <laughs> I like to end with a bang because that's a bang, okay? TEPCO is now thinking it might need a robot able to jump over debris. 
by Dennis Normoyle. He's not normal or normal or anything else. If you go look at his stories, he got nothing on nuclear. He doesn't know a fucking thing about nuclear. Right? Because that's the story you're just we just read that one there. That's his name. He you look at all his stories, he knows nothing about nuclear. I went and read a whole bunch of them. He knows fuck all about nuclear. He's scum. Like the people that he's putting on a pedestal. This is another one of the stories, though, of Japan that he covers. So he is very friendly with Japan. That's why he got a job at that particular media, because he likes licking boots. It's all he can do. But he's, he's a mass murderer. But, uh, but publishing that story, Dennis has risen above the normal scum and become a mass murdering scum. 180,000 students eating radioactive beef, the ones they didn't leave beyond the parish. 1,300 beckles a kilogram, served for lunch in Miyagi. It's heartbreaking. Those children are now victims. We have to stop nuclear. I don't want to be doing what I'm doing. I'm only doing it because we got to do it. It has to be done. The planet demands it. God demands that I get here every day and do it. My conscience demands that I come here every day and fight. My conscience demands that I do the whole coastline. My conscience demands that I do this that I'm not allowed to have rest, and that if I try to rest, then I should be tortured in my, when I'm trying to rest. I'm not allowed to sleep. I'm not allowed to have a life. I have to be dedicated to this because this is, has to be taken care of before I can get peace. I, I will never have peace on, 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 on the way I see it, but I can only have peace when I work as hard as I, when I work myself to exhaustion and pass out for a few hours. That's my peace. But I can only pass out when I felt that I accomplished something. And doing these streams, at the end of the hard day's work, night's work, and morning's work, and then do these little short streams, you see these little streams. You don't see the incredible amount of work that goes in behind all this just to get to this stream. See, you can't just sit here every day and, and blog about this stuff. You, you, you're here to yell about it because you were reading through it and living it all day, the day before, all night, all morning, every moment, every second. I call it a curse, but uh, I understand the importance and significance of it. But why didn't they get somebody that was healthy? Why me when I'm not very healthy? Like, I still got a headache from trying to do the trailer this morning. This is so fucking hard just to get a little one-minute clip up. It really is. People just can't wrap their mind around it. They think everything is like magic. It all just happens instantly, nothing to it. I need your support. We're running out of time. I'm running out of time. I'm going to have to head on the ocean soon. I'm way behind. We got to raise the money. This weekend, I guess, March 11th on Sunday, I'll do a fundraiser live show all day here and also turn it into a fundraiser to try to raise the money so I can get a break and get the equipment I need. Not that I'm going to get a break. I still got to figure everything out, get everything to work. There's so much work. There's so many bills to keep up with. I apologize for not being able to absorb those expenses. You can don't. Links are below. We can off at Fukushima. Now, one plant worker could be seen. I've never, that's the most I've ever seen in a group at Fukushima ever. And by the way, on that fake paper where Buddy got collared from, they found all six main figures in the paper were fraudulent. The ultimate irony. Prime Minister, Japan must restart nuclear reactor for survival of society. This is not ultimate irony. This is insanity because a single reactor can take your country down. You can hide it all you want, but it will take your country down. That's a fact. It's Saturday, March the 3rd. Oh, okay. We're little on video. 95, 100 degree off the wind. The wind's over here. Well, before we call it a day, I'll play this out. This so we got two sales up. Four in minutes? The I'll jump this in. Week. I'll be right back and we'll close the show. Deck today, all the middle do that I can get at. This so was two days ago. Redo it another two times. We'll get most of it off, hopefully. 
It's looking really good today. And so it's a 10 knot or a 10 kilometer wind, 12 kilometer wind. We're doing 6.3 kilometers to 6.5 kilometers average seems. And yeah, I got I seen it hit eight kilometers when I was happened to glance down earlier, but it was gusting a little bit more. And so we're getting so close to having everything ready. Spring is only uh, two weeks away, I guess. Today's the third, the 20th is the first day of spring, which was basically when I was hoping to leave. And we'll check and see how many more storms are coming in March. March came in like a lamb, and then that means it goes out like a lion, but not all the time, right? Sometimes it comes in like a lion, goes out like a lion. In like a lion, out like a lion. But we got the other sail up. You can see it's like five feet off the deck. It should be down with the deck, but it's a shorter sail. And that's okay. We don't mind that. And this sole sail, she's still holding together. It's got a hole right there though. I gotta fix that. Fix that with some tape and stitch around it so the wind can't just split it, right? And the same thing with the other sail, I got a few small rips, little tiny ones like half an inch long. So we're doing eight. 7.6 there that time, kilometers an hour. And we're, we're 70 degrees off the wind. The wind is coming from over here. I'm kind of letting the boat do its own thing with a clean hull and a clean rudder and a clean propeller. It should be a little bit easier to steer than when it, everything was dirty and full of mussels and slime and whatever. So, pretty happy. I actually feel good about it today that I'm actually feels like I'm ready but I know I got a few other things to get accomplished and some equipment to pick up. And so, it's a sad but true effect that somebody has to go out there and do it. On days like this it might seem nice but it can all go to shit in a second. And so even though it does look great and it feels good, it's a stupid amount of work and if you drop your guard for two seconds and you don't do maintenance on everything and the wind picks up or something like that catches you off guard, you're gonna have a real bad day and wish you never came out here, you know? And that's the price you gotta pay to find out what Fukushima has done. I guess not to find out, but to go document it. It's past the point of, will we find any species this time? We know we won't, right? So now I'm uh, almost 150 degrees off center. We're traveling at six kilometers an hour. And so that's acceptable. And before I washed the hole a couple days ago, before that it was so hard you had to steer like on a 35 degree angle to the wind to get any speed whatsoever. And now it doesn't seem no matter which direction you go into, you're doing okay speeds faster than you were before. Even with like 10 kilometer an hour, 11 kilometer an hour wind right now. All the glaciers are gone. And that's it for Saturday, I suppose. Yeah, that's it for Saturday. We're, yesterday was a pretty rough season and put it through its paces. So we'll do the regular shows now. We'll start again um, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time tomorrow night on the 6th of March. We're going to not do a show on Friday and we'll do an all day March 11th show as long as I can last. So hugs for everybody. Thank you, everybody. Links below the video. Anybody want to donate? You can donate with PayPal below the video and credit cards at my website over at thenuclearproctologist.org. And I'm glad I got to stream out today. We've been under siege.
they took him down my other side. I'd like to get a deckhand, Kathy, but who's going to come out there for seven months? It's so hard to get anybody for seven days, let alone seven months. I can't even fund myself. How am I going to fund somebody else? And people that says they can fund themselves, yeah, I've seen this before, and you all run away. You're not there to do the job because you don't know how to do it. And then I got to work to train you all the time. It's not worth it. I'll get the job done. You just got to have some faith. I got faith, I don't stop. Everything I do is piece by piece. I built the whole operation piece by piece. And everything works all the time because I built it with the intentions that I wouldn't get the opportunity to do it another time. I had to get it right this time. And so the dedication and the forethought and just the concentration that it puts into these projects amazes even me and humbles even the most knowledgeable people out there when we look back and see what we accomplished uh, together. Together we stand tall, divided, we're all gonna hang separate. It's time to stand tall. Thanks for everybody. We'll see everybody tomorrow. Thank you, everybody.